I'm Keep Jewel, and this is Comic Smack, your weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know from the world of comic books and superheroes. And on today's show, we're taking a closer look at Champions, issue number five. What happens when the off the wall Gwenpool tries to make a go of it on the team? Will she make the cut? Let's hop on in together and find out, shall we? So, as we open up the comic, we do so on the Daily County. What, really? Wow, Daily County. Jeez, and it's spelled exactly like my last name, too. Where is this, like in California or something? I didn't know I had a county named after me. That's so cool. The Champions have come to this small town to try and save a bunch of innocent people from a mosque fire. It's clear to everyone one with eyes that this fire was no accident and that it was hatefully motivated. Worse still, the local sheriff is no help to our heroes. In fact, the first time he opens his mouth, he calls Cyclops a mutey. Just one of several slurs this guy throws out in the course of the comic. Viv, using her special robot powers, manages to recover pieces of the incendiary device used to burn down the mosque. And surprise, surprise, it was a device that just until recently was housed in the police evidence locker. But unfortunately, before our heroes can point any fingers, this is when Gwenpool decides to make her big appearance, and she does so by messing with the police and having them turn on the rest of our heroes. Yeah, Gwen is really gung-ho about all the great work that the Champions has been doing, and is so serious about joining, she even painted a little C on her chest. For those of you out there who don't know Gwenpool's deal, her name is actually first name Gwen, last name Pool, and she's from, well, more or less our world. She knows all of these heroes because she's read the comics. Genre savvy also just so happens to be her great greatest weapon and her greatest curse. When she hears about what's going down in this town, she jumps to the conclusion that, oh, well, surely this must be the work of Hydra or the Sons of the Serpent. Dirty cops are always doing the bidding of those guys, right? Right? Oh, oh, no, wait, they're just really scummy small town cops, damn it. It seems that hate crimes have been on the rise in this town for a long time, so much to the point that the champion social media contacts reached out for them to do something about it. They do their best to help run off some kids painting swastikas on the side of a synagogue, but at the same time, they know that this is just a drop in the bucket when the whole thing is corrupt from the top down. The champions know the sheriff is dirty and up to no good, but at the same time, they can't really touch him. It would mean going to war with the police, and that would send a horrible message, especially so early in these young heroes' careers. Now, not everyone on the force is completely lost. There's a young deputy who likes the champions and sees all the horrible things that are going on in his town, but at the same time refuses to speak up out of fear of what it might do to his career. He also falls back on that old standard of, oh sure, I'm part of a horrible system now, but I can do more good inside the horrible system than challenging it. All in all, the champions feel pretty dejected and defeated at the end of the day, especially as a protest begins to form outside the police station with more and more people throwing more horrible slurs around. The team doesn't like it, but what are they supposed to do? Go down there and beat them up? That would be punching down. That's not what the champions are about. For being so incredibly powerful, they have never felt more powerless than they do in this moment. In the end, though, the story has a happy ending. Well, mostly happy. The young deputy decides to step out and speak out against the sheriff, even though it mostly means career suicide, as the dude has a great lawyer and a bunch of people in the town on his side. But you know what? It's a moral victory. Proof that the champions can do just as much good inspiring people as they do actually fighting crime. And you know what? That sounds pretty good to me. Champions number five is yet another incredibly timely, incredibly topical story coming from Marvel in what is becoming a real long list of those titles. The fun extra angle they take on it, though, is the inclusion of a character like Gwenpu, who for all intents and purposes is a fan of superheroes. She spends the whole time in this dire situation looking for a comic booky answer, only to be let down to find out there isn't one. She was looking for an escape escape his fantasy, but she ended up getting some much-needed information. Mark Wade continues to do the whole one-and-done thing for stories, too, which, you know, I think is kind of a lost art form, being able to tell your whole story and get your idea across in only one issue. Champions 2 is probably second only to the Miss Marvel comic itself, and I think really being able to capture the voice of millennials. It doesn't talk down to them, it doesn't talk around to them, it actually lets them be heard, which I think is really cool. Overall, I feel comfortable giving this comic an 8.5 out of 10. Hey, everyone, thanks so much for watching my newest video. I hope you enjoyed it, and while you're here, why not check out another video I have on offer? Or maybe if you're feeling in a supportive mood, you want to like or subscribe. And if you want to support the creation of more videos just like this one, then please, by all means, check out the Cape Joel Patreon. A little bit goes a very long way, and I will see you all next time.